Hi folks, this is Rose from In Rose's Garden, and today we're going to work on a rather complex pair of earrings with our bargain bead box Winter Wonderland. I have already made one of them and worked out all the kinks, I hope, and this is what it is going to look like. So let's get turned down and we'll get working on the second earring. So this is our earring that we have got finished. And what we're going to need to make this is the um, really pretty little star beads. Some 18 gauge wire for the outer ring and to make a round jump ring. I don't normally um, use round ones, but the oval will not go through this. And I have actually already made them. Um, if you have a large jump ring, you don't need to make one. You can just use a pre-made one if I can see find my uh, caliper and I'll tell you how big this is okay this jump ring is about looks like it's about an eight so anyway if you have an eight a pre-made eight you don't uh, you don't need to make one but um, I uh, did make one so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to put this jump ring right on to this little uh, snowflake star, whatever you want to call this really pretty blue, uh, blue bead. Put her around onto here. And close it up. Okay, there we have our jump ring on now. We can set this aside. We need one large oval or another round one. Um, and this is for here to hook this on to here into this our circle. We need 10 of the little uh, tiny bicones. I've got quite a few extras here. One of the flat table cut coins, the ear wire, and then we're going to need some 18 gauge, some 20 gauge, and some 24 gauge wire. The 18 is of course for our circle. 20 is to make our little um, mountains and valleys that's going to be in here. And the 24 is for wrapping in the little uh, bicones. My originally plan was to put the bicones inside of the circle in the little um, dip of the valley here, but they did not want to go there. They were a little bit too big, so we put them to the outside, and I think that's still good. So we need about nine inches of the um, 18 gauge. So let's get that cut. So we have, now this has one of those little notches on it that I don't like to have there. So we're gonna cut that off. And like I say, about nine inches. That might be, a, I think that's a little more than we actually needed, but um, I prefer to have too much as opposed to a little too little. And now we're going to set this aside because what we want to do is make our mountains and valleys portion of this first. And I didn't measure this, so I'm not sure exactly how much we need. I am thinking, I, I think I just did it right on the spool to make the mountains. And what you need to do that is some smaller flat nose pliers and then, like I say, the 20 gauge wire. So, like I say, I'm just going to do it right here on the spool. We want to leave a little tail here because we're going to make that little loop in here. And we're just going to just start bending back and forth like this. So then we make these little 
And I think we have either nine or ten here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then the longer tail. So one, this is going on three, four, five, six. This one isn't got very much of a dip in it, so let's push it in. Now there is a tool that Beetleon makes that you can do to make these. I think it's called the crinkler or some such thing. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then leave a tail. And that's what we need for this. Now I'll show you what we need to do to adjust it so that it will fit um, inside the circle. Okay, so this just needs to be worked so it goes into a circle pattern. It's best just to do it with your fingers. And as you can see, we're still way too big. So we need to work it in. Let's see how we're doing. Okay. Oops, I think I'm minus one. Let's see it count again. No, because this should be a mountain down here rather than a... So... One, two, three. One, two, three, four. Yes, I am shy one, so we will take this tail and make another one here. Getting this little piece made is probably going to be the most uh, difficult part of this earring when it comes right down to it. Okay, we need to get you going up here a little more. Get you down there a little more. Okay. Go down this way and up up this way. Right in the middle. Or should be. And we're still a teeny touch too big, so we gotta bring her in. Let's see what we got. Okay. 
I think we're just about there. Though the next step we need to do is make a couple of little loops right at the very base of both of these here. Yeah, it looks pretty close. Now you're not going to get these perfect because once you start bidding these in a circle, some of them want, want to go one way, some of them want to go another way, but we want to get it as close as possible. So the next step is to make those little circles on the We need to get those little loops on like I say we only want the leg to be about as long as the mountain should be so we're probably going to have a lot of extra wire here because we want a really tiny loop um, we don't need anything bigger than it takes to get our um, jump ring in so let's turn a little loop here and then we'll cut off the extra Same with the other side. Now these are going to be sitting side by side like this and they're going to actually I'm going to turn these little loops to the back um, because we want them to sit in a manner that they are not going to be interfering with the um, or this one got a little wonky let's see if I can get it fixed Now what we want is these to sit like this inside this circle. And these are going to be turned to the back, like I said. So we don't want the cutters here. We want these. So we're going to turn these to the back like so. Making sure the ring stays closed. They're going to come pretty close together here. Let's see if we got these in good spots here. Okay, I think that's pretty good. Now the next thing we need to do is make the circular outline. So this is where our um, 
18 gauge piece comes into play. And what we're going to do is we're going to take and leave a string. Well, I wouldn't call it a string, but we want to bring the leave a tail and then bring our wire all the way around. To make our outer frame as you can see that's now bigger than we need it to be and that's fine we're going to pull it up in fact we're going to if i remember right i used the inner one here to um, finish it up so just slide it all the way to the bottom and pull her tight When it looks like it's going to fit right about at where you want it, like that is, then what we want to do is bend this outer one up. So it goes straight up and down. Re-verify it's going to fit in here really good. That's looking pretty good still. And then what we're going to do is we're going to hold this while we make two or three wraps here. I think I just have, yeah, I think I'm at three on that one. So we'll take it to three and then we will trim this off and tuck it up. Okay, now I know that I probably went off camera a few times because this is really close work kind of thing and I don't want to um, mess it up, but at the same time I know that I bring tend to bring things towards me as I'm working on them if they're tight like this. So now that we've got this done, we are going to find our center point which would be this mountain here get it as close to center as you as you can right here and then we need to get our 20 um, four gauge wire out so that we can do the wraps around with our little bead of the 24 here and again I didn't measure I just took a loop and a half that should be plenty um, to go around this little piece and um, then you've got a choice here you can start right up at the top which I did on this one but I think what I'm going to do instead is start in the middle down here and that way I know with this one I ended up having to push and pull until I got it more centered because I didn't keep it centered as it went around so we're going to start in the middle. So take our wire about here and get our one, two, three, four. This is the fifth one is the middle here. So we want to try and put it right in the middle of our piece here and then we'll start putting on our beads. So we're going to go right here around this mountain and do, make sure your wires in the middle since you are starting from the middle. And then we're going to just start putting our beads on. So it's one bead on the outside of the mountain side. Come on, babies, just come out of there. So 
So you just hold it. Actually, I think I usually put one more right here. Yes, I did. So that goes around there, but then this comes up and goes around the wire once to grab hold of your bead. Slide it down into place. Hold it with your fingers as you slide around and grab that next valley. And you put her in place like so. Now this is already slid slightly because I can see it's no longer in the middle. So we need to slide that back into the middle. The mountain right there. Pull her up tight and then go around through the valley. Now this is slid slightly sideways. I don't want it over there so we'll slide her back over here. As we go around and as I say through once now I tend to put my finger in there when I'm doing my wraps because I find that I can keep it from kinking up so easily that way so we just go around and pull her now my bead has decided it doesn't want to go where I want it here, so we got to bring her back up, push her into place, and then get our wire back into the proper place. And I see that that is slid out from down here, so go back over here and get her back out of there. So we want her in this valley right here. Boy, this one wants to be difficult. There we go. Okay. Back through here. Flip it around. Grab your next bead. Pull it over. Go over and through your valley and up. Let's see if she's still staying more or less in the middle here. This looks like it. Now it also looks like this is getting a little bit out of shape, but that's all right. We can straighten it up. That's the wonderful thing about wire. It's straight. It's relatively easily. Come on, babe. There we go. Hold this baby in place. Right, I go over the valley here. Okay. And up. Now I have let this stretch out some because you see this is no longer 
right at the center. And this is where we want it to be, is right at the center. So let's move these down some. And yeah, that mountain is no longer right at the center. It's coming this direction some. So let's do this, get it back more centered and try and see if we can work this around. Oh yeah, that was really simple to work. It went right over. So now we need to go and do the opposite side here. And we do this just the same except for opposite, just going down and around. And uh, so let's get going with that side. Now, since we have decided we more or less have this in place here, I'm going to take this tail and I'm going to wrap it around the base bar three times. so that we have it, oops, stabilized a little here. Okay, and then we'll just leave this tail up here. So hopefully it stays out of our way. Now I'm gonna flip it because I find it's easier for me if I'm flipped when I work on it going this direction. Um, let's see, maybe I won't. We'll see. But we need to put the other beads on this side. Come on, baby, don't go up on top of the bar. Okay, this has gone up on top of the bar where I don't want it, so we will wiggle it. There we go. Back down on there. And that's why I have extra out, because I always seem to throw at least one or two onto the floor. Now we just have one left. And we don't want to do any adjusting that we're going to do after we get this one done. say we're going to have to do any adjusting we want to do right now. And there's probably a little bit. Let's see. One, two, three, four, and that's number five. One, two, three, four. But we do want this side to be up a little bit more. So let's move our mountains up a little bit. So 
Well, that these come together relatively well. As you can see, these are only just a little bit off here. So let's see what we've got as far as comparison is concerned. Now we're not far off. It's just this very last one that looks to be the problem. So we'll need to pull this one over here some. might want to use your pliers a little bit, and you can if you need to. Okay. There we go. Now this is actually that little one that I made a little bit too small but decided to go with it anyway. So let's bring that over here as much as I can. Okie dokie. And once we get this how we want it, as far as situating little things are concerned, um, this is up on top of the other bar again. That's part of the problem, too. So let's see if we can get that to get where it belongs. There we go, I think. Oh, yeah, that's much better. Okay, now that we've got this more or less how we want it, we can put these um, three stabilizing loops right here on this side. Get this one out of your way. You don't want to wrap that into it. And now, and now because this one is a little bit big and uh, we want to keep it pretty close to where we've got it at, I'm going to take the long tail and I'm going to pull it around the bar, the middle bar here a couple times. And that will help stabilize this piece from going anywhere. And then when we're done with that, trim our tails off. Now, since this piece is pretty good sized, I'm going to put it aside just in case I need something small. And uh, then we want to tuck our wires in. Make sure that tiny little thing right in there. Okay. There's our piece. Now, because this is slightly off center, I'm going to try and get it a little more centered here. And maybe that just needs to do this. Okay. Now, now we can do one of two things now. We can either put the center piece in our little crystal or we can put the, the top up. Either way is perfectly fine. Um, we're going to get the same result. So I am going to do, I think, the centerpiece here first. So what we need is to take this and get it as straight as we can. Put on this piece here, this bead, and then this one. If your little bead doesn't want to go on, it might have a too small of a hole. Some of these are smaller than others, you'll find. And so just get another one if you have some. There we see, that one went on just fine with no problem. Well, now it's having a problem. There's obviously a bend in the wire. 
So anyway, there it is. So now we need to make our loop up at the top. And I get my bell making pliers and use my smallest one. Up and around and over and bring it back this way. Now I leave a little bit of a gap or I try to when I'm doing the this last loop here because I'm going to put my ear wire in it and you need to slip it between. Now when you're putting an ear wire on to um, something like this when you're making the loop instead of using a jump ring or something you want it to face the opposite direction of how you need it to be so like so you slide it down the bar and snap it through here and then see it turns when it gets to this side so then hold your pliers your uh, wire with your pliers and just wrap three or four times. I think I have four on that other one there. Actually, it looks like it's three plus the one coming down. Oh, yep, that's, this is the one. Okay. I think that's right now. Yep. So cut off this. Being careful that you don't cut anything extra. And then you want to tuck this in as much as you can without breaking your stone. And that is one thing you have to worry about here because this is a glass bicone. And if you break it, you're going to be starting over. You may need to trim that a little bit. But we'll see. Because it doesn't want to go in there as well as I want it to. And I don't want to break that bicone. Okay, now we have the um, top done. Now all we have to do is put on our jewel. So in order to put the jewel on, all you need to do is to take your pliers, open up this oval jump ring. You'll need two pair of pliers for this with a twisting motion. Now you go through these little tiny loops right here. This one looks like it may need to be pulled a little tiny bit closer. That thing went up on top of the bar again. I want that. Stop doing that. Then put your stone in, making sure you've got it facing forward, and close your loop up. Now our oval jump ring is going a little sideways, so we need to get the wrap up a little bit higher so that it, we can, um, so it will sit properly. See, like this one does. So let's do some adjusting in our wires again. I 
just pulling and pushing until we get them closer. And it is this one that needs to come up. All right, now that we've got that in there, our earring is finished. So there is our pair of earrings. And later I'm going to make a necklace using this same technique with the bigger piece. So we'll have a pendant and then we'll put some chain and probably some broken chain with some little beads in it as well. But anyway, here's our pair of earrings all finished. And I hope you enjoyed this. And let's turn up and we'll look at it a little better. Okay. There are, is our bargain bead box winter wonderland um, little crystal earrings. There's one. Here's the other. They don't have a lot of swing, but they do have a swing at the top and on the crystal itself. I think they're really pretty. Ooh, those stand out nicely, don't they? Hmm, that's pretty. Anyway, those are our Winter Wonderland earrings using our Bargain Bead Box Winter Wonderland. And this has been Rose from In Rose's Garden. And I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Later, we'll probably make the necklace.